The Disney princess team up in the Wreck-It Ralph sequel almost broke the internet when the scene was teased in a trailer. And having watched the movie, I can confirm that seeing the iconic princesses assemble for the first time will not disappoint fans. yippee ki movie lovers, it's Jan here, and today I'm revealing every amazing Disney princess detail, secret and easter egg you need to look out for in Ralph Breaks the Internet. Plus keep watching to the end where I'll reveal some bonus frozen easter eggs in the movie. And to celebrate the new film, I'm giving away some awesome Funko Pops. Hit the bell and make sure you're a subscriber, and leave a comment about the movie to enter. A really fun moment in Wreck-It Ralph 2 is when the princesses are so fascinated with Vanellope's casual clothes that they want their own. So Cinderella has her mice make brand new outfits for everyone. And after a 1960s Batman style transition, we see the princesses in their new comfy clothing, and Cinderella sighs, ah, so this is love. Cinder's words poke fun at the song she sings when she dances with Prince Charming at the ball, and also mock the Disney princess cliché of true love. While each piece of the princess's new clothing matches the colour scheme of their iconic outfits, what's especially interesting is that they're also loaded with Easter eggs and inside jokes. The tank top Rapunzel wears under her hoodie has a design which reads We Got A Dream, The Snuggly Ducklings, a clever callback to the song Entangled, I've Got A Dream, which Rapunzel sang with the regulars at the rowdy pub The Snuggly Duckling. Her leggings also have a pattern with the sun crest symbol of Rapunzel's Kingdom of Corona. For Ariel, the words gizmos, who's its and what's its appear on her top, referring to the lyrics of her iconic song Part of Your World. And in keeping with Ariel's love of all things human, she's so amazed at her new thingamabob, aka shirt, that she even launches into song, singing, I once had a dream that I might wear a shirt. Pocahontas' sweater has a design of a wolf howling at the moon, plus the words blue corn moon, in a nod to the same line in her song Colours of the Wind. Cinderella's jumper has an image of her classic pumpkin carriage on it, plus G2G, aka Got To Go, a fun throwback to how she had to leave the ball before midnight. And look at the beanbag she's sitting on, it's patterned with sparkles like the ones from the fairy godmother's magic wand during Cinderella's transformation scene. Belle has a silhouette in the shape of the beast on her shirt, with the letters BFF, which in this case are short for Beast Friends Forever. Anna's shirt has a We Finish Each Other's Sandwiches theme, in a shout out to her song with hands, Love is an Open Door. And Elsa has a blue and white coloured Just Let It Go sweater, referencing her iconic song. The Nola on Tiana's top is short for New Orleans, Louisiana, where she's from. And the crown in the middle of the O reflects the design of the Princess and the Frog's title card, and is also a hat tip to Prince Naveen. Moana has hashtag shiny on her shirt, together with a picture of Tamatoa, the villainous giant crab who sang the memorable song Shiny in her movie. Mulan wears a bomber jacket that sports some Mushu artwork on the front and back, in honour of her dragon companion and friend. Snow White gets a poisoned apple-themed top, Jasmine has the genie's three wishes, and Sleeping Beauty's top appropriately points out that she's the Nap Queen. Merida's shirt has a bear and the word mum on the front, because her mother transformed into a bear after eating enchanted cake. There are also tons of amazing background details and easter eggs for fans to uncover in the scene, especially on the princess's individual dressing tables. For example, Belle often switches back to reading during the scene, and so of course there's a stack of books in her cubicle. Just in front of the books on the table is the magic mirror from Beauty and the Beast, and a candelabra which is a hat tip to Lumiere. In Ariel's cubicle, there's a reminder of her fascination with human objects, because if you look very carefully, you'll spot a box of thingamabobs. And you can also see the candelabra from her secret grotto. On Tiana's mirror, there's a picture of Tiana's place, the restaurant she and her father dreamed of opening, and which became a reality for her and the princess and the frog. And on the table, there's also a plate of her famous man-catching beignets. Also in the background is a photograph of young Tiana with her parents. Continuing the bear theme of Merida's clothes, she has several little toy bears on her vanity table. On top of Anna's dressing table you can see a vase of sunflowers, which reflects just how much she loves those flowers, as we've seen throughout the Frozen films. And you can also just about make out the dolls of the sisters which appeared during the Do You Wanna Build a Snowman song in the first Frozen movie. In Rapunzel's area you can see her chameleon Pascal sitting on top of her paint box. And there's a painting of an owl, which is a shout out to the owl belonging to her friend and handmaiden Cassandra in the Tangled TV series. Cinderella has a pumpkin on her dresser, as well as a clock that's stuck at midnight, and Jasmine of course has Aladdin's magic carpet and the genie's lamp. 
The crests above each dressing area are also suitable symbols for each princess. For Ariel, there's a Nautilus shell referencing Ursula's enchanted necklace, which held Ariel's voice that she gave to the sea witch in exchange for human legs. Tiana has a water lily, Rapunzel has the magical golden flower, the Frozen sisters have a crocus reminiscent of the official crest of Arendelle, and Cinderella has a glass slipper. There are also some clever little tributes and Easter eggs to signature details we associate with the princesses. As Vanellope glitches into the room, Aurora is asleep on a chaise longue, holding a red rose and in exactly the same pose she was during her enchanted slumber in her original 1959 movie. Rapunzel continues to indulge her love of painting, as you can spot her here very briefly painting on the side walls of her dressing area. And while the other princesses lounge around on chairs, beanbags or cushions, Rapunzel actually sits in a chair of her own hair. Another detail you'll need to look carefully for is Cinderella plucking a leaf out of Pocahontas's hair. That moment is a little homage to the leaves we see swirling around Pocahontas during her song Colours of the Wind. And in another nod to that song, watch how Pocahontas' hair is constantly in motion with magical wind blowing through her tresses even though she's indoors. And when the princesses spring into action, they brandish many of their signature weapons or items, with Cinderella going hilariously dark and smashing her glass slipper, making it into a shiv. You'll have doubtless noticed Merida's bow, Mulan's sword, Belle's book and Rapunzel's frying pan. But a little harder to spot is Ariel brandishing her dinglehopper. What is it? It's a dinglehopper. Also in this shot, Elsa stands ready to ice Vanellope with her freezing powers. And Elsa's sister Anna doesn't have a weapon, but she has her fists at the ready, which is a nice callback to that moment in Frozen where she punched the villainous hands in the face. <laughs> Moana has the awe we've seen her use to threaten Maui, Tiana being the gifted cook she is has a rolling pin, and Sleeping Beauty has a spindle from her spinning wheel. Pocahontas wields the club that her father was going to use to execute John Smith, and Jasmine brandishes the genie's lamp. There's also a cameo appearance by Pocahontas's raccoon, Miko, although he's clearly not a fan of Vanellope when she goes to pet him. And we also see Cinderella with her mice and birds, and Jasmine with her pet tiger, Raja. There's another funny nod to Aurora's sleepiness when she starts to doze off while Merida's talking. Merida wakes her up with a jolt and the look on Aurora's face is just priceless. Near the start of the scene, after Pocahontas asks Vanellope what type of princess she is, the other princesses humorously run through a list of tropes that have been part of their characters over the years. Do you have magic hair? No. Magic hands? No. Do animals talk to you? No. Were you poisoned? No. Cursed? Cursed? No. Kidnapped or enslaved? enslaved? No. Are you guys okay? Should I call the police? Then I have to assume you made a deal with an underwater sea witch where she took your voice in exchange for a pair of human legs? No. Good <gasps> lord, who would do that? Have you ever had true love's kiss? Ew, barf! Do you have daddy issues? I don't even have a mom. Neither, Neither do we. we. That last joke is a reference to the dark truth that so many Disney princesses don't actually have a mother who's still alive, which is possibly due to the fact that Walt Disney felt responsible for the death of his own mother, so the theory is that the studio adopted a kind of no mother's policy in the stories they developed. Now, if the princess scenes in Ralph Breaks the Internet impressed you with how true they felt to the original characters, that's in part because most of the original actors who voiced the characters returned to record the lines for the new movie. In fact, when each actress came into the studio to record her lines, she would often make little tweaks and changes to make the script feel slightly more authentic to each princess. Of course, some of the original actresses weren't available. Adriana Casalotti, who voiced Snow White, and Eileen Woods, who voiced Cinderella, are sadly no longer with us, and Mary Costa, the original voice of Aurora, is retired. However, Jennifer Hale and Kate Higgins provided voices for Cinderella and Aurora respectively, as they've voiced those characters in recent Disney projects. And lending her voice to Snow White was Ralph Breaks the Internet co-writer Pamela Ribbon. There are also some other great Disney princess Easter eggs peppered throughout the film. During the pancake milkshake game, the little toddler watching looks incredibly like baby Moana. It seems to be a deliberate choice by the filmmakers as the little girl's official name has been revealed as Mo. On top of that, there's an even sneakier Easter egg in this scene because Mo's mother, who's driving the car, is actually voiced by Nicole Scherzinger, who also voiced Moana's mother in the 2016 animated movie. I also noticed several other frozen Easter eggs outside the main princess scenes in Ralph Breaks the Internet. When Vanellope arrives at Oh My Disney, listen out for the pop version of Frozen's Let It Go. And among the viral cat videos that Ralph and Vanellope encounter is one of a grumpy looking cat pushing a little Anna doll off a table. 
Also, the Frozen sister's father, King Agnar, appears in a pop-up ad. Finally, there's an amazing additional scene with the princesses late on in Ralph Breaks the Internet. However, I don't want to spoil it here, so I may do a separate video about that. Now, who's your favourite Disney princess in the movie? And would you like to see any of the princesses team up for their own film? Don't forget to comment and subscribe for a chance to win a Funko Pop. Tap left for my next Wreck-It Ralph video, or tap right for another video you're sure to like. And if you enjoyed this, remember to share and leave a thumbs up for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!